We're learning new details about what may have led to a high profile local pastor's fall from grace. Barry Mencow pleaded guilty in connection with a federal lawsuit. And 10 News I team reporter Mitch Blocker explains the million dollar payout at the center of this controversy. This upscale property is part of a legal battle costing tens of millions of dollars, a bankruptcy, 17 related lawsuits, and a criminal indictment of this San Diego pastor. It all revolves around this development in Rancho Santa Fe. It's about 550 acres, all in the coastal foothills. Some of these properties are as large as 7,500 square feet, and most of them have the price tag to go along with it. It's called the Bridges at Rancho Rancho Santa Fe, which gained national exposure as a site for primetime golf matches with Tiger Woods on ABC. And we're trying to grow the game of golf, and I think we've done that. The Bridges was a Lennar Corporation project, a major U.S. builder based in Florida. Lennar wanted a West Coast connection to develop the Bridges and tied up with San Diego real estate dealmaker Nicholas Nick Marsh. When the Bridges project was about 80% complete, Marsh accused the company of ripping him off. He sued but got hammered in court. The judge said the real estate man repeatedly gave false testimony. There were also some pretty significant damages amounts that were awarded to Lennar. Significant, as in $54 million, notes Arnold Rosenberg, the assistant dean at Thomas Jefferson School of Law. Nick Marsh then threatened Lennar's board of directors in this letter, which we have a copy of. He accuses the company of shameful and disgraceful business practices and threatens to expose its dirty little secret. Lennar didn't budge, so at Marsh's request, enter Barry Minkow, a supreme con man turned born-again pastor turned TV personality who dished out advice on fighting fraud. I'm, I'm stunned. Minkow was a pastor at San Diego's Community Bible Church, and his story of redemption was featured on 60 Minutes. And we went to great lengths to, to fool and to deceive. Minkow's game plan for Marsh was detailed in this email. Minkow promised to thoroughly investigate Lennar's lies. He's confident Lennar will settle rather than deal with the consequences. Minkow's charges for services, $125,000 plus a one to two million dollar bonus for forcing Lennar to settle. But Lennar never blinked, so Minkow's Fraud Institute issued a scathing report. In other words, if you have a complicated business model with lots of partnerships, and I'm not just re referencing Lennar. Minkow's Fraud Institute, despite no solid proof, accuses Lennar of running a Madoff-like Ponzi scheme. Reuters, The Wall Street Journal, and CNN all reported the story. The company's stock nosedived, costing shareholders $358 million in just the first day. There's pretty sizable amounts of money involved in this one. Recent filings in the case are revealing, like how lawyers for Marsh offered to call off Minkow's damaging fraud allegations in return for cash and Lennar's stock. Lennar's refusal to cut a deal because of their extreme dislike of Mr. Marsh was called obstinate. The underlying facts uh, uh, regarding Barry Minkow in particular are really remarkable. The bankruptcy filing shows how Minkow eventually went down for smearing Lennar, pleading guilty to security fraud, and how the former pastor is willing to help the feds bring down someone else. For the IT, I'm Mitch Blocker, 10 News. Now, Nick Marsh and his attorney say that, <clears throat> excuse me, media reports about Mincow testifying against Marsh are not true. Just who the U.S. is prosecuting is unknown at this time. Marsh adds that he's a victim of Mincow. He never ordered any damaging information about Lennar that was released, though he still maintains Lennar ripped him off. Tomorrow at 5, members of Pastor Mincow's parish come forward for the first time to tell how he ripped them off. And if you'd like to read the documents the I-Team uncovered for yourself, log on to 10news.com, click on Investigations. He is the local pastor accused of stealing from his flock and the Scripps Ranch Church he led. But tomorrow, Barry Mincow will appear in a courtroom on charges of conspiracy. It's a story that the 10 News I-Team has been following, and reporter Mitch Blocker uncovers the surprising admission made during a packed church service. After months of no response from church leadership, we got a tip from Community Bible Church parishioners that a meeting with the elders would reveal at last accusations laying out what former Pastor Minkow stole and how he did it. I'm your Christian brother. I wouldn't rip you off. Minkow became pastor after appearances on national television, including Oprah and 60 Minutes. 
He's seeking redemption as an evangelical minister. He sold himself as a former con man, having done time for a Ponzi scheme who turned to God. His redemption made news. And I believe people can change. It began unraveling when Ming Kao was caught trying to blackmail the builder of San Diego's bridges project. He pled out to a federal conspiracy charge. Those revelations about Ming Kao were last March. We suspected his fraud went further. That's why we went to hear what the church leaders have to say. How are you, sir? Hey, good. How's it going? Hey, good. We work for ABC News. We, we wanted to talk nah, to somebody sorry, a little dude. bit about... Sorry, dude. Do you work for the church? How come nobody wants to talk to us about this? The meeting is in the chapel of the community church. Behind closed doors, our cameras can't go in. They turn off the television feed from the chapel, but we do have an IT member already inside. Outside, no luck. I'm, well, I'm not the right person to talk to about that. The right people are the elders who reveal a church audit team was created to unravel Ming Kao's mischief. The news is not good. The church was hurt financially, and so were trusting parishioners. It was a betrayal. I felt betrayed because I trusted him, and I trusted that he would always be there. Victims who reached out to the I-Team have been connected with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami, Florida. That office is prosecuting Ming Kao for the conspiracy. According to the church elders, Ming Kao was ripping off the church since 2000, a decade of theft. It began to unravel when the church's name was found on PayPal accounts that Ming Kao controlled. The I-Team has uncovered extensive records that appear to support these claims. We learned Ming Kao set up lines of credit in the church's name, maxing them out, including Seacoast Bank for $70,000, Bank of America for another $70,000. But this is a small slice of the big picture. Church auditors say he opened up 10 accounts in the church's name, using forged signatures and sending the bills to his office set up in the church, as well as he fabricated church board minutes. It didn't stop there. He stole church donations for hundreds of thousands of dollars, stealing checks and cash. In one case, a family gave the church $75,000 for Darfur relief. It was meant to help genocide victims, but instead, Pastor Barry Minkow helped himself and took that money too. For the IT, I'm Mitch Blocker, 10 News.